Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and today I'm going to be showing you how to win fast with an opening called the Fried Liver Attack. Now before we get into it, please make sure you like, subscribe, and have post notifications turned on so that you never miss a video. I really do put a lot of effort into these videos, so if you could just take a couple seconds out of your day to just click subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. So yeah, let's get into it. The Fried Liver Attack comes from an opening called the Two Knights Defense, and it's actually a very common opening, and it begins with the moves e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, and knight f6. Usually, uh, you would see bishop c5 going into a sort of Italian position. However, after the move knight f6, uh, to start off the Fried Liver Attack, white plays knight g5. So we're immediately putting pressure on the f7 pawn with the bishop and the knight, threatening a four. Because if the knight landed on f7, it would be forking the queen and the rook. So usually how black is supposed to defend this is by playing d5, x, and then knight a5. And then white would give a check. We block with a pawn after takes, 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 takes. This is the position uh, that you're meant to go into to defend the front liver attack. However, sometimes you may get a position where, say, after this, they take and they might take with the knight. Now, this is where the people, they don't know how to defend the front liver attack. And what you can actually do here is you, you can just take the pawn on f7. Because then after king takes, queen comes to f3. And now you can see we're attacking the king and the knight on d5. So now what black has to do def to defend this is to play king e6. And you can already see, like, this is going to be devastating for black. His king is already on e6 by, like, move 5. Uh, yeah, this is just terrible. So after king e6 is played, usually we see knight c3, just putting more pressure, trying to win the knight. Now the knight could come back. And usually here, like, because we're already putting enough pressure on black, we can just castle. And like black is just stuck you can see this bishop is stuck this bishop is stuck these rooks are doing nothing uh, the queen's doing nothing so black is just completely frozen here and that is why we have time to castle so now maybe they want to try and defend their knight even more so they might play c6 but then we can just play rook e1 just immediately aligning our rook with the king and this is how the attack goes usually we play d4 try and open up the king and yeah that's just it and now I will show you a game from the player Greco, who I, you may have heard of him, you may have not. He was a player who was around during the 1600s, and he used to just abuse people with like really quick attacks. If you look at some of his games online, he won some in like six moves or nine moves, like ridiculous like that. Because during those times, nobody really understood how chess worked. Apart from Greco, obviously, because he was able to beat these people in like a ridiculous amount of moves. So yeah, now I'll show you the game. Okay, so this is the game, and now we're going to go into the fried liver attack. So as I showed you, we start with e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, knight f6, knight g5, d5, and takes. And this is where Greco's opponent made the mistake of taking with the knight. So now, obviously took the pawn on f7, then queen came to eight, uh, f3, king comes to e6, we're putting pressure on the knight, the knight comes back to try and defend the other knight, and now Greco castled, and now what his opponent tried to do was defend his knight by playing c6, so this is everything I showed you just a minute ago, and now what Greco played here is actually, uh, if you ever get into this position, it's a very good move, he played d4. And what d4 does is instead of playing rook e1 where the king is blocked by the pawn, he's immediately just opening up the king. So then after takes and rook e1 check, the king now has to move and the king is just going to be brutally attacked. So king came to d7 and then we had a massive trade. And then white won a pawn, check. And then after the king came to c7, and you can see why this opening is so good already, like, look at that king. And now, bishop comes to f4, check. Bishop d6, trying to block. And now, it, this is actually a really good move, what Greco played here. He played qu 
queen c5 and you can sort of see here the level that Greco was above most of his opponents because I doubt people in those times would have been able to see the fact that bishop can't takes queen because there's a pin on the king. It's just I don't think it's the sort of thing that they would have been able to see. Not that I think, you know, they're stupid. They might have been if they were to fall into this, but you know, like it chess is a very complex game and it it's just hard to see things like that, I guess. So after queen check, the king actually came to b8, and this was a massive blunder, as this is now checkmate in two moves, and I'll give you a couple of seconds to see if you can find it. Congratulations if you found it, and if you wanted to go for real style points, you can play queen takes d6. And then after queen takes d6, bishop takes d6 is actually mate because the king stuck on b8. Now obviously you could take either way of the queen or bishop, but if you ever actually manage to reach this position, like against some random person online, if it were me, I would definitely take with the queen because, you know, you're just sort of rubbing it in their face a bit for, for the fun of it, you know? So now obviously to avoid all this, he should have played this, but again this is already just terrible you know that's just mate instantly like it was mate either way where it was going so yeah uh that is the fried liver attack and if you have any questions please leave them in the comments and i'll definitely make sure to answer them uh, i hope you have a great rest of your day and i'll see you guys in the next one